Okay, everybody, before we get into this tutorial, something super exciting to tell you. We have a brand new game out called Rumble Runner. You're going to love it. It's got some really cool mechanics, great gameplay, very fast paced, lots of good fun to be had here. Check it out in the map code on the screen and down below. And let's get into this tutorial that you guys have all come here to learn. Okay, everybody, we are making a new game here and it's an obby. And look here, I'm going to hit a checkpoint. We've got some confetti. Kind of neat. Let's continue on. Now, I'm not that good at obbies. My child is much better at obbies than I am, but I can kind of do okay. Here's another one here where we hit a laser system. And the idea of checkpoints is that you can sort of save your progress in a game uh, as you play it so that if you were to die, then, you know, you're not going to go all the way back to the beginning. So you see, if I don't make that jump, then we just go back to the second checkpoint where the laser system System is instead of all the way down to the bottom where the confetti is. So let's keep going. Okay, I finally made it to the very last block that I have to get up to. So I'm going to take a running jump. We get up here and we get some fireworks. So let's make let's make a basic obby and understand how checkpoints work. And we're also going to uh, learn a little bit about the VFX spawner if you've never used that too. Okay, as usual, let's start our way through this project in UAFN, the visual references to understand. So we've got what is a bit of an obby here. We've got some rocks, essentially we climb up and down on. On some of these rocks, we have a checkpoint device and a VFX spawner device. Two devices that you can easily find down inside of the content browser. If we go down to the bottom, we've got one checkpoint device here and a VFX spawner here. And then we've got all of these red areas. These red areas are damage volumes. You can set them to damage characters when they touch them or just straight eliminate them. And that can be seen here in the details panel. I've got my damage type set to elimination so that if you touch it, you're just straight eliminated. So essentially, if you fall off any of these little rocks here, then you get eliminated. OK, the last thing that I have that is required for this part of the tutorial is this game manager. I'm using the same game. I'm using the same game manager that I use when I made the collectibles and the custom currency tutorial. If you haven't seen that, check that out in the videos list. OK, so now that we understand the very basics of how we're creating an obby, essentially you just have land masses that you got to jump around on. You have a checkpoint here and there, one, two and three up at the top and the uh, damage volume so that if you fall off, you get hurt. And that's it. So let's take a look at our verse device, which is our game manager here. So we'll head on into verse to look at that. OK, we're inside of verse and I find this very valuable to learn. I don't think that bindings on the device itself in the game are a very good idea. I think everybody should learn verse. So here we go. OK, so we have a few things going on. We have our checkpoints here as editables. When you have them as an editable, they show up inside of the details panel when you select your verse device. And so you can set all the items inside of the details panel to the thing that you're going to use inside of verse. So we've got our three checkpoints and they are player checkpoint devices. We instantiate them here. We define them, their names right here and at editable makes them available. And that's that. And then we have our three VFX spawner devices, VFX one, VFX two, VFX three. And these are all VFX spawner devices again found inside of the content browser. OK, so let's take a look at how to make these things talk to each other when something happens. So the checkpoints all have an event. They have a couple of events, but the one that we really want to listen to is the first activation per agent event. So when an agent activates that checkpoint by touching it, then we are going to call on CP1 event, which is a function that lives right here. Very simple. So same for checkpoint two, same for checkpoint three. We want to know when an agent stomps on that checkpoint. When we call on CP1, we're going to pass in the agent, which is the player. It's just the base object of the player. We really need this. We can get all kinds of stuff from this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call register for that checkpoint one, which is here, which on the in the scene is right here. This is checkpoint one. We know that because over in our verse device here in our editables, I have set it up to be player checkpoint one pad one, which is this guy right here. As we can see in the outliner, it gets selected when I touch it. Go back to the game manager, right? Player checkpoint one pad one. Go to our verse device that's on the stage player 
checkpoint one pad one is set up as the p checkpoint one inside a verse. We go inside a verse, p checkpoint one. When something, when an agent touches it, we're going to subscribe to that event that happens that gets called, and uh, we're going to call this function. So that is the whole loop of how verse devices or any device really works inside of Fortnite. We register the agent because we want them to come back to this spot when they get eliminated, when they fall off or they get shot or something like that, and they're eliminated, they'll come back to this checkpoint as soon as we hit it. And then we're gonna enable the VFX. So quick point about that. If we go over to our VFX here, you'll see over in the details panel that I have enabled on phase set to none. We don't want this enabled, we don't want it running. So to make it run, we would call enable, which is what we're doing inside of verse right here. So very, very simple. This is a very easy uh, system to use, but I am gonna show you something slightly different once we're done all this. And so the on CP1 event, on CP2 event, and on CP3 event are all just a checkpoint, one, two, and three, doing these same things, register and calling the VFX that is associated in the editables panel to enable. But the thing that I don't like about this is that the VFX continue and continue and continue. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have these guys be enabled for say five seconds and then have them be disabled. This is a really interesting thing. So we're gonna make a function here and we're gonna say disable VFX and we're going to pass in a VFX object. So v VFX spawner device. We're gonna pass that in, void, because we're not returning anything. We're just going to do a thing with this VFX device. The other thing that we need to do, because we're going to make this thing sleep, or we're gonna put a delay on it, we need to put suspends here in the function so that verse knows that we're going to have a little sleep. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go sleep 5.0. And then from there, we can go VFX disable. And there it is right there. So that will disable the VFX after five seconds. And that's that. So all we have to do up in here is say spawn, because we've covered sleep in another tutorial. If you don't know any about anything about that, then check out that tutorial it's in the list. So we'll spawn, disable VFX, and we'll pass in the VFX spawner that we are currently enabling. So VFX three, we only really needed to go off for five seconds. In fact, if we wanted to be really fancy about this, we could actually say we want this one to go for 10 seconds. Now sleep is a float. So we're going to put amount and we're going to put in here, comma, uh, sleep time. And this is a float. Oops. And then we'll go, go like this sleep time. So this one will disable after 10 seconds. Uh, let's copy this over here like this and copy this one in as well. And then we'll take VFX one, put it in here, VFX two, put it in here so that we have one function doing the disabling. We don't want to call three different functions. We can actually just pass in the spawner device that we want to go to sleep, which makes this function here kind of useful in the future if we wanted to disable it any other way. Maybe somebody shoots a target or something like that and it disables the VFX. We can just call this and we can say how long we want it to wait before disabling it. So this will allow each of these VFX to do a thing. So I'm going to say for this one, five seconds and this one, maybe three seconds. Now that we've changed all that, we can save it. We hit control shift B to build the verse file, or you can come to the top and go verse, build verse code, but shortcut keys are way, way faster. And then push our verse changes, come back to the game, and let's see what happens. So we should see a change in that the first VFX here should go off and we should see confetti, but it should stop pretty quick. See, now it's all gone. There's no more confetti. And if we head on up to the lasers, then we should be able to see that go off and then stop after five seconds. So it goes for a little bit and then turns off. And so that's exactly what we want. We want to have a little delay put on there. Say, well, you don't need to go forever. You're done your deed. Thanks a lot. And so that kind of concludes this tutorial. I know it's a little bit of an easy one, but checkpoints and VFX devices and using other features that we've already learned in other tutorials like sleep can be very, very handy. Hopefully that's been interesting. If uh, you have any questions, let me know anytime. I'll see you guys in the next one.
as a vet, but everybody know that you're a threat with a restless.